Buying headphones can be crazy confusing, especially if you're not familiar with the headphone specs that many manufacturers list on their web pages. You know the ones I'm talking about, the total harmonic distortion and the frequency response, you look at them, you're like, what? So in this video, what I'm gonna do uh, with the help of the headphones on our test bench here at the Master Switch is break down the five most common headphone specs you're likely to see and what they mean, and I'm gonna do it in the shortest amount of time possible. The first one is driver size. Now, a lot of manufacturers make a big deal about this. They might go, oh, we have massively oversized drivers of over 100 millimeters, and you might go, well, what's that all about? A driver, by the way, is the part of the headphone that actually makes the sound. It's a thin disc of material, usually, that sits next there and actually creates the waves that allow you to hear things. Drivers can range in size. For example, in a pair of earbuds, like these Metse 11 Neos, you have driver sizes of between sort of six and 12 millimeters. Uh, in others, like these Monoprice M1060s, these are 106 millimeters in size. Now, you might reasonably ask, uh, what is the advantage of having larger drivers? The answer is not very much. There's an accepted bit of wisdom that larger drivers give more bass, uh, and they do give slightly more controlled bass, but it's not louder or more powerful. Driver size isn't a very useful metric for working out how good a headphone is. What's more useful is working out what kind of drivers you have, whether it's dynamic, whether it's electrostatic, uh, whether it's planar magnetic, and I'm not going to go into all those terms now, but uh, we do have a full explainer article on the bottom in the description, and uh, we go into this in much more detail there. All you need to know right now is that driver size is not a very good indicator of very much. Then there's impedance, which is a measure of how well something resists electricity. It sounds complicated, but it isn't, because you only need to know a couple of things. The first thing you need to know is that impedance is measured in ohms, that symbol there, and the lower it is, the less power you will need to drive the headphone. The higher it is, the more power the headphone will need. Uh, if you have a pair of headphones with uh, imp impedance of between 1 and 32 ohms, like, for example, this pair of AudioQuest Nighthawk Carbons, they can be driven by a smartphone. You can plug them in, the smartphone will provide more than enough power, and you'll be able to get a very decent volume out of them. 33 ohms to 100 ohms is a little bit of a gray area. You might be able to run it on a smartphone, but it'd be, you'd be a lot better served if you have a little portable amp going there, just to give it a bit of an extra boost. If it's over 100 ohms, like, for example, this pair of Bayer Dynamic Amaron Home Over Ears, which are 250 ohms, you're gonna need an amplifier. Your basic smartphone will simply not provide enough power to give these the juice they need. Uh, now, you might reasonably ask, well, why would you have a a pair of headphones with high impedance, why not just go for low impedance? Well, high impedance headphones are able to treat electrical current more effectively, and they're able to better express the sound. Third thing you need to know about is sensitivity, sometimes called sound pressure level. Essentially, it's a measure of how loud a pair of headphones can get at a given current. It's expressed in terms of like uh, 120 decibels per one milliwatt, or 100 decibels per one, one milliwatt, that kind of thing. And it gives you a rough idea of how loud a pair of headphones are gonna be, but it's not particularly useful because uh, there are variances uh, between how manufacturers test uh, their headphones, and so you're never quite sure how they're going to compare. I would say steer clear of sound pressure level or sensitivity or however it's referred to. Uh, it's not massively useful when choosing a pair of headphones. What about total harmonic distortion? THD. This is a measure of how much the audio signal changes from the time when it enters the headphones to the time when it enters your ears. And generally these days, most manufacturers have a very, very low total harmonic distortion. When I say distortion, by the way, I'm not talking about the kind of distortion you get uh, through an electric guitar or the kind of nice humming distortion you get through tube amps, you know, that kind of gooey warmth. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about bad distortion here, and the less you have, the better. So if you've got a THD of less than 1% at, say, 100 decibels, then you're good. Uh, that is a very, very solid reading. You shouldn't pay too much attention to this. As I said, across the board, uh, most manufacturers have this down. There's very little distortion, but it's good to know nonetheless. And finally, my absolute favorite one, frequency response or frequency range. This is the single most useless stat around. Manufacturers trumpet this and it means absolutely nothing. A frequency range is the range of sounds a pair of headphones can make. Uh, in other words, how low they can go and how high they can go. Uh, it's measured in hertz or occasionally kilohertz, which is a thousand hertz. For example, this pair of Bose and Wilkins P7 wireless are 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz, that is 20,000 hertz. Uh, so in other words, they can make sounds as low as 10 hertz or as high as 20 kilohertz, which is pretty good. But you will see a lot of headphones that uh, go up to sort of 40,000 hertz and 60,000 hertz. And this is where things get screwy because human beings can't really hear above 18,000 hertz. We just can't. We can't physically. Even at our 
peak uh, when we're teenagers. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to hear that high. So for a headphone manufacturer to state that their pair of headphones gets up to 40,000 hertz, well, congratulations, mate. Good for you. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, if a headphone is advertising that it can go that high or go beyond or go below sort of 20 hertz uh, in terms of the low end, then generally you can say that that headphone will have no problem reproducing things in the very high frequencies, but that's about as far as you can go. Frequency response, you can disregard. Do not pay attention to it. Really, the only things you need to know are the driver size, the type of driver, and the impedance, and maybe the sensitivity, uh, which kind of works a little bit with the impedance, and we go into that in far more detail in the uh, article, which is linked in the description below. I'm Rob, this is The Master Switch. I hope this has been super helpful. Please drop uh, any comments below with any questions you got, and don't forget to subscribe and check us out on Twitter and Facebook too.